Facebook authentication. I'm gonna go show you a quick demo and then we're gonna get straight into the code. So we're gonna continue as Andrew, we're gonna ignore those warnings and we have a logout button and this also works on Android as well. But that is the demo, pretty simple. Doesn't look that good, but it works. Functionality first. So first thing we're gonna do is CD out of the folder and we are going to use create expo app at latest. So we're gonna copy that in and we're going to call this Facebook video. And we're gonna use the templates flag and call this tabs. Okay, we're gonna CD into our Facebook video and we're gonna open up our code editor. And the first, we're gonna open up a terminal and run npx expo prebuild. So then we can generate both our iOS bundle identifier and our Android package name. Perfect, so now that we have these here, we're gonna copy and paste the iOS one. It's also the same as the Android, so that'll be perfect. Now we're gonna to go to Meta Developer Console, Meta for Developers. If you haven't made an account already, now's a good time to make an account. I believe it takes a second. We're gonna to go to My Apps, and we're going to create another app. As you can see, I've had Two, two other login videos that I have attempted. So we're gonna hit next. We are going to authenticate and request data from users with Facebook login. This is the only one we're gonna be doing. We're gonna hit next and we have the app name. So login video two, I messed up on the first one. Not that you need to know that. And put in password. Your password will be different than my password. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is customize adding a Facebook login button. Click on that. We are going to hit add. So now we have access to the email. Now we're gonna go to quick start and we're gonna hit iOS. We'll set up the iOS first. Luckily, Expo takes care of all this native code for us. The only thing we have to change is this app.json, which when we run, when we run NPX Expo build, it will run and generate the native code based on this app.json file. So we'll be back here later. So first thing we're gonna hit is next. Bundle ID is not that, but it is com.andrewheim at Facebook video. We're gonna copy paste that in, hit save, continue, and we're gonna enable single sign-on. Boom, and then we're done with iOS. Go to Android, we're gonna hit next. Next, we're gonna throw in our package name, which is the same as the iOS Benel identifier. And then we're gonna, as you can see, we're gonna copy and paste this and then add main.activity at the end. So main activity, save, and hit continue. The next thing we're gonna do is add your development and release key hashes. So we're going to, I have, I have a Mac, so this might be different for Windows, but it looks like it's basically the same. We're gonna get the SHA1 key from our debug.qt sort, and then we're going to convert it to base64. So we're gonna copy paste this in, and right now the path is currently inside the app, and then right now we just have to CD into the Android, the app, and then the debug.qt sort, and so that's why I change the file path to that. So we're gonna cut that, paste it in, and it says enter key store password. I just hit enter and it works. So I don't know if you have a different password. We're gonna grab that, the last line right there, and that is our, what we're looking for, and our key hash. We're gonna copy and paste that in. And I had this problem earlier, the UI is a little messed up, so I just have to zoom out, hit save, hit continue, and enable single sign-on, zoom back in, all optional. That might be fine for you. Now we're gonna go to our app settings into basic. And now that we have our app ID, app secret and everything, we can now go to firebase.com and set up Firebase. So we're gonna go to our console and we're going to add our project name. Please like video exclamation point, actually we'll throw in two, might as well. And if you haven't liked the video already, please do. And then hit create project, hit continue. And so the first thing we're gonna do is set up the authentication. So we're gonna go to build authentication, get started. 
The first thing we're going to do is add Google. And the reason we're doing that is because this allows it to generate a reverse client ID in the Google service.json file. And I'm not really sure why, but it's kind of a bug, but we just kind of have to do this every time we work with Firebase. So now we're going to add a new provider at Facebook, hit enable. And now we have our app ID and app secret, which luckily we have inside this app right here. So we're going to copy and paste those two. So app ID, app secret, or I guess we'll show it and then we'll see it. Don't tell anyone though. It's a secret. And then we're going to hit save. Okay, now we are going to our project overview and now we're going to add both our create our iOS and Android apps in the Facebook console. So first thing we're going to do is grab this bundle identifier and we're going to add that there. We're going to say, ooh, also comment and sub. That's a good one. <laughs> so, you know, if you haven't subbed or commented, leave a comment and sub. But thank you if you have. Now we're going to download the Google service.info.playlist, hit next, hit next, next, and then continue console. Perfect. Now we're going to go to and make our Android. We're going to use the same Android package name and we, blah, blah, blah. That's the first one, favorite one. Okay. Now we're going to get our SHA1, which is basically the same line to get the SHA1 key that we used earlier. But I, I've been going to this GitHub, this GitHub thread to use it. And so it's basically the same though. And again, we're going to remove this and then add in the app and then cut that and then use that to grab our SHA1 key. Perfect. Copy paste that and add it to our debug signing certificate. And then we'll register the app. Download, hit next, next and continue to console. So now we have both of our Google service plist and JSON. So we're gonna go to our finder, find those files. And I forgot to delete these ones. So we're gonna delete these old ones. These are the new ones. And so we're gonna change the name. Perfect. And we're gonna throw these into our root directory. Now we want our expo app to have access and know where those files that we just added are because they could be anywhere. And so we're going to add them here so then they know where the file path is, which is basically in the same root directory, which is in the same directory. Perfect. Thank you, GitHub Copilot. So now we have the Firebase and the Facebook set up. Now we just need to change up this app.json file. And we're going to be working on this plugins array right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just copy and paste all of these plugins. See, these are the basic plugins. You can find these on React Native Firebase here. I'll just show you right now. So if we go to React Native Firebase, Social Auth, and this is just the normal getting started. We have our plugins array, which is somewhere. Oh, we have Expo. So let's scroll down to Expo. And then this is basically what we just copied and pasted. We're not using Crashlytics, but yeah, so that's good. So now we're going to be working on this React Native FB SDK. So we're going to go back to the Social Auth in React Native Firebase. Click on Facebook, and we're going to be using this community supported React Native library. We've already configured the iAndroid and iOS and created our developer account, enabled Facebook login. We've also enabled Facebook login on Firebase. So now we just need to change the plugins and then we can get into the code. So, first thing we're going to do is go to the package, and we are going to go to the plugins, and it gives us a good example right here. And we're just going to copy and paste this plugins array, or no, not the whole plugins array. We just want this React Native FB SDK example, and we're going to replace this with it and add a comma in the right spot. And so now we just need to replace it with our app ID, client token, display name, and scheme. We'll change the display name right now to sub if you haven't already, and you can change that to whatever you want, but you can also use this one as well. And now let's go to here, get our app ID, copy paste this in. And as you can see, it's going to be the same as our scheme, but just with an FB at the front. We're going to grab our, we're not going to grab our secret. The next thing is our client token, which can be found in advanced. 
scroll down and there's our client token copy paste that bad boy put it in there save it and now it looks like the plugins and the app.json file looks good so now we are good to go and we can say npx expo pre-build to generate the android and ios folders with the updated plugins oh it looks like we forgot to npm install so so we're going to npx expo install all of these packages which is basically app auth um, expo build priorities that this is all used for firebase this is used for the facebook sign-in the fb sdk next and then we have sh256 which is used in which is used in the code and we're just going to install that now to make it easier and quicker okay now we can run npx expo pre-build perfect now we can run npx expo run ios we'll start with the ios first Okay, it looks like our app is up and running. Everything seems to be working, which is always great to see. So what we're gonna do is go into our actual app. And first thing we're gonna do is delete these two. These are both for web. We are on an app. So now we're gonna do a new file and we're gonna call it index.tsx. I'm just using this as our entry point into the app to make things nice and simple. So we're gonna generate a React Native component we're going to save that and now we're going to add that screen or that layout the screen that we just made to our layout call it index boom now we are routing to this index and as always I like to add the safe area view from react native so then it actually shows up in the safe spot now we are going to the social authentication and this is where the copy and pasting begins so first thing we're going to do is get this button Step one, get the button, and we are going to import that from React Native. And perfect, now we have our Facebook sign in button. It doesn't work yet though. So now we're going to, we have two different functions. We're going to get the function, it's called on Facebook press. And we have this normal one, and then we have this limited login. For some reason, I wasn't able to get the regular login working with iOS but it works with Android and this only works with iOS. So what we're gonna be doing is using this iOS one first and it's the sub setup is a little bit more complicated so that's why we're doing it first. But basically first we're gonna copy and paste the entire function inside and let's make sure all the imports are good. So first thing we want is the SH256 that is the package that we're gonna use. Uh, we also need a login manager what else do we need? Authentication, perfect. Let's import all this stuff. We need auth from Facebook. Uh, that is used from, I don't know why it's not imported, but import auth from Facebook. There it goes. And that looks good. So in theory, this function works. There's one thing that I noticed that basically every time you log in, you want a new nonce, a uh, way to identify the app or the login with a unique ID. And so I'm not exactly sure why we have to do this, but basically we're gonna take this nonce and then generate a 256 every time we log in. And so what I did is create a random number generator basically for this. And when I said I created it, I basically went over here, went to chat and said, can you create a random number, random nonce generator for me? Perfect. Yeah, and this is what it came up with last time and looks like it's still good. So we're just gonna add that in there. Oh my days. Okay, there we go. So we're actually gonna create this, put this function, put it up here. Now we have our generate nonce function. And then we also want to change this code right here. So now instead of the nonce that was one, two, three, four, five, six, we have this random nonce generator. So that is perfect. This is an error that popped up earlier, but we're just gonna take care of it now. So now that we have our iOS function on Facebook button press, now, as soon as we log in, we should be calling this auth.signin with Facebook credentials, and this will trigger the on auth state change. So now we're going to listen for the on auth state change, and we're gonna implement this section. So first we're gonna grab these use states and use effects, add it at the very top, 
and import use effect as well as the use state. Perfect. Now we are going to have our main app navigation, which is right here. We're going to throw this in here. So instead of this login button, we want this safe area view that we are working with right here. So we're going to cut that and throw that here. Perfect. We'll add a little semicolon at the end. So this is still accurate to that. And then once we log in, we will also want to add a button that signs us out. And I always love get copilot like that. And everything looks good. So now we're going to save it and we're going to hit Facebook sign in and cross our fingers and hopefully it works. Submit for login, continue as Andrew. And there we go. We are inside our app and let's change this to a safe area view. We always love the safe area view. And now we can hit sign out. And there we go. We have our iOS Facebook sign in working. So now we're going to exit out of here. We're going to exit and run NPX Expo run Android and work on our Android. So we basically are going to have two different functions. As I said earlier, we have our Facebook iOS login and we have this function right here. This one is what worked for me with Android and this worked for me for iOS and they were not interchangeable. So we're going to have two different functions, basically essentially doing the same thing. Um, if there's a better way that anyone else knows, then we can maybe leave it in the comments down below but this is just what ended up working for me. So we're gonna copy and paste this other function. We obviously can't have two functions, so we're gonna call this one Android, and we're gonna call this one iOS. So we're gonna do a little tricky thing. We have on Facebook press iOS, and then we have Facebook on Facebook press, on Facebook button press Android. So what we're gonna do is basically call the platform, dot, which is a package in the React Native, dot operating system OS and we're going to check it if, if it equals to iOS it returns a string and if it does we are going to run this on Facebook press button iOS and if it doesn't then we are going to run on Facebook press Android so basically if this is true we run this phrase and if it's not true we run Android and just to, I did this nice little thing here where I added this text and then added that the platform. Platform.os. So you can kind of see what platform we're on. So we're going to see what it evaluates to. And we're actually going to copy and paste this and throw it up here so you can see it here. And just to make this look good, we are going to add this just by content center so everything's centered. Okay, as you can see, we have the text Android because we are on the platform Android. And we're going to run the Facebook and Android on press. Okay, we're going to hit login and continue as Andrew. And it didn't work. User canceled the login process. I believe I got this problem before. And what I did was literally just pre build and restart the app. So we're going to do that and see if that works. So what we're going to do is exit out of here, npx expo pre-build again, and npx expo run Android. We're going to hit Facebook sign in, hit login. Once you input your information, hit continue. Property access token does not exist. Uh, okay, so we forgot to import access token in our Facebook Android props. So we're gonna save that. We're gonna minimize and sign in again. Okay, we got the same error, so we're gonna exit out and run npx expo run Android again. So we're gonna run Facebook sign in, continue as Andrew. And there we go, we have our sign out. Just for a couple style points, we're going to copy and paste this, add this to the save area view, and boom, we have a nice sign out button, which we click, and we sign out. And that is the video, thank you for watching, and let me know what other videos you would like to see. 